Hi, my name is Peter Dove, author of Master Dressage. Today I just wanted to create a little video about hand usage in dressage and getting the horse on the bit. It's an unfortunate phrase in that it seems to indicate that this wonderful feeling is about the bit, when in fact you don't even need a bit for it to work. From now on, in this video, I'll simply refer to it as the seeking reflexes, coined by my own coach, Mary Wanless. It seems endemic in dressage for riders' hands to be in constant motion, wiggling the rein, fiddling, and what comes with that, which is a horse who is inconsistent to the contact and whose head ends up moving from side to side in some cases. This is often because the rider believes that the seeking reflexes are about the horse's head position, and when in fact it is more to do with the way the horse uses its back and the rest of its body. When the rider has the correct skills to make the seeking reflexes work, there is no need to wiggle or fiddle or sponge down the rein. The horse does the job for you. The horse places its head and neck in the right place. This is because in the seeking reflexes, the horse lengthens its top line, engages its abdominal muscles, reaches over the back, over the neck and into the rein. It is a complete series of muscle chains that activate. Once you develop the skill to produce that reach, the horse's muscle structure starts to develop along with the new movement pattern. In the video inset, you can see my daughter riding her prelim pony, Tinker. Notice how still her hands are and how the horse reaches into the rein. The contact is steady but not heavy, and Millie can change the frame of the horse by allowing more with her hands. It becomes easy to move from working trot to stretching and back again. Now, of course, I'm not saying the horse and rider here are perfect, but there is a steadiness to the contact and little interference from the rider, surely something we all want to see more of. I once heard a quote attributed to Albert Einstein, which said, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. In general, the rein should be still and not in constant movement. Constant wiggling is not even an aid, it just becomes part of the background noise. I'm not saying that a rider never uses the rein, but it should be for some specific result and then it should be still again, after the specific result is obtained, and even then the movement should not be gross. The corrections to the horse's way of going are generally the realm of the rider's whole body rather than some random pull-ons on the reins. If you're a logical person like me, you'll see that fiddling with the horse's head will never fix the rest of his body, that the seeking reflexes are a whole body experience in both the horse and rider, and that the horse-rider interaction is far more complex than just fiddling with the horse's head. On June the 11th, my own coach, Mary Wanless, author of the Ride of the Mind books and DVDs, is starting an online video training course over five one-hour modules designed to explain what the seeking reflexes are, how you go about creating them, and what skills the rider needs to make this state happen. Not once will you find her talking about fiddling the horse's head into position. Instead, you'll learn practical techniques designed to get your body into a place of power and skill to influence the horse far more positively than before. To make a huge change in your horse, click the link below to find out more about the course. Before I sign off, I'll tell you a very quick story about how Mary convinced and then taught me that getting a horse to work in the seeking reflexes was something achievable in a short space of time and for almost any horse. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, okay, perhaps it was in this galaxy, I was introduced to a book called Ride With Your Mind and my thoughts on riding were changed forever after reading it. I finally was able to get enough pupils together to have Mary come up, up to us and do a one-day clinic. The horse I was riding was a cob whom I'd been trying to get on the bit and I'd tried lots of other instructors and several of them had sat on the horse and, and none of them could make the change. I was told that uh, it would take a long time, the horse would have to become more supple, uh, and you know, I was very despondent about this. You know, I'd seen lots of professional riders have their four-year-old horses working on, in an outline, looking really great. So the day of the course arrived and I began my lessons with Mary. We started making some progress, but I asked Mary to get on. What happened next blew my mind away. I mean, the horse was very, very lazy. Um, so Mary got on, she gave it two taps with her stick, and the horse went off into trot, surged into trot on the bit. I mean, I was flabbergasted. It was round, it was powerful. She halted and reined back and moved off into trot again and this horse was completely transformed. I'd never seen a rider make such a big change to the horse. 
Of course, since then, I've seen this change happen time and time again. As Mary often says, this level of skill requires great responsibility from the rider. A rider can make a huge change to the way the horse moves, but then has to be careful to allow the muscle structure to catch up. In a way, we become the horse's personal fitness coach, never pushing him in a way which causes him to break down. New movement patterns can be created with the right skill, and then over time, the horse develops the strength and the muscle structure to support the new movement pattern. So to find out more, click the link below and check out the brand new course about the seeking reflexes.